Scientifically speaking, we're still scratching the surface when it comes to various mysteries of the universe. We've discovered so many things that we didn't know existed only in the last few years. And this of course also applies to some of the more obvious objects, such as stars. Today, the scientists believe there are a lot of different exotic stars out there, we just haven't really found enough proof to definitively say if they truly exist out there. For example, the mysterious boson stars that exist theoretically but haven't really been discovered yet, the mysterious quark stars, the stars made entirely out of quarks and nothing else, the stars that are basically almost black holes but are still surviving and maintaining their shape, and even some weird multi-stars such as the thorn Zitkal objects, the stars I've discussed in one of the videos you can find in the description about 5 years ago, although I should probably make a new video about this just to give you some more updates about what we know about them today, which by the way means that maybe you should subscribe if you'd like to learn more about this in the future. Anyway, so yeah, there are quite a lot of different exotic stars, but one of the more interesting stars that we think might exist and might actually prove something else as a result is a type of a star the scientists sometimes refer to as the dark star or dark matter star. A star that by definition could obviously prove the existence of dark matter and the type of a star that a lot of scientists believe, if dark matter is real, might have existed billions and billions of years ago pretty much everywhere in the universe. And so today we're going to discuss this new study and some of the new updates about this unusual theory, or I guess about this unusual hypothesis, and also talk a little bit more about what we know and what we don't know about these objects. But first I guess the obvious. This idea implies that dark matter is real and very likely consists of some kind of a particle that we just cannot detect yet. If the particle is real, it's probably something that doesn't interact with matter, doesn't interact with light, and possibly does not interact with itself either. Now it might sound unusual, but we do know that, for example, even neutrinos that took years and years to discover don't really interact with a lot of stuff, they barely interact with anything. And so it wouldn't be unusual for dark matter to also be some kind of a non-interacting particle that just seems to kind of exist and gravitationally influence things, but doesn't really do anything else. Although, as a side note, as of today, all of the experiments trying to find dark matter so far have failed with only some experiments showing some promise that hasn't really been recreated yet. So we don't know if it's real. But if it is real, at least some of the models in the past have suggested that dark matter could have also possibly changed its effects or maybe even can interact with something. Specifically, scientists believe that maybe it can interact with itself to some extent. In other words, it can be a kind of a self-annihilating particle. A particle that's essentially its own antiparticle that then annihilates creating energy. And it could still even be doing this today and this could be one of the ways we can discover this dark matter by looking at certain regions with higher density where it could be producing certain types of energy. Now in the past, some of the scientists have actually tried to explain the mysterious gamma ray glow detectable from the center of our own galaxy as potentially higher density of dark matter that's expected in this region, annihilating and creating certain gamma rays. Although at least one recent video suggested that it could also be pulsars, with pulsars currently being the most likely explanation. Either way though, in modern universe, the concentration and the density of dark matter would just be too low to produce a lot of these observable effects. Mostly because modern theories predict that dark matter is very likely in a kind of a halo-like formation around a typical galaxy, with most of the effects produced by this halo observable across the universe. And there are actually quite a lot of effects we've discussed in some of the previous videos. At the moment there's really no better explanation for what's happening here. But the thing is, some of the previous experiments that try to simulate the universe by using supercomputers determined that if dark matter is just this non-interacting particle, it doesn't really necessarily recreate the exactly same universe as we're observing. It still sort of looks like our universe, but it does have certain properties that don't add up. Specifically, the galaxies end up being a little bit more compact than usual and will often have way, way more galaxies orbiting around them than what we're observing in the universe. However, when the model is changed just a little bit and the dark matter particles become slightly more interacting, this is when we do recreate the universe we seem to be observing. In other words, this very weak self-interaction could be really important for the formation of the universe as we know it. And this is of course where the suggestions from this new paper come in as well. If the dark matter particle is slightly self-interacting, at least in theory, it could also not just produce the universe as we know it, but it could also produce certain types of stars that might not exist anymore, but could have existed a long time ago. And this is where this idea of dark stars or dark matter stars comes in. They're not truly made of dark matter, but they possess a lot of dark matter on the inside. 
But from the outside, it would sort of resemble a typical gas cloud, containing a lot of hydrogen and a lot of helium. And because the early universe was also obviously a little bit more hot and a lot more dense, chances for these particles to come closer together and produce denser objects was a lot higher as well. And so as a result, it could produce these relatively large, somewhat compact but not too compact clouds, possibly a few thousand astronomical units in size, maybe even up to about one light year across. Inside of this cloud, there is quite a lot of hydrogen and helium, but also quite a lot of dark matter, mostly concentrated very, very close to the center. And this is where a lot of the dark matter particles start to essentially self-annihilate and produce a lot of energy. Energy that sort of resembles a typical star energy. But in this case, not really powered by nuclear fusion, instead literally powered by these annihilating dark matter particles. But unlike a typical star, they would not really be easily visible with naked eye. As a matter of fact, they would not really resemble a star at all. I guess calling them a dark star is quite appropriate. Instead, they would very likely emit a lot of gamma rays, a lot of neutrinos, quite a lot of antimatter, but mostly be invisible in a lot of other frequencies. And the only other giveaway sign here would be the presence of huge amounts of gas, specifically a lot of hydrogen gas and quite a lot of helium as well. And so if we do detect a relatively large gas cloud that seems to also possess a lot of very energetic particles coming from within it, that's essentially the presence of some kind of a dark star or dark matter star. And because there will be so much dark matter present inside of these objects, in theory, they could continuously produce energy for at least a few billions of years and even maintain these objects without collapsing them into anything else. In other words, without even needing any kind of nuclear fusion to produce the energy that typical stars produce. And because they technically have no limit, they could also be extremely bright and much, much larger in size than anything that we have in the modern universe. So much, much bigger than any star we know of. However, once the dark matter self-annihilates enough, and once the density becomes much lower, that's when the gas might start collapsing into something else, and maybe even produce a typical star. And because the density of dark matter would be much lower today, we don't really expect to find anything like this in the vicinity within a few billion light years away from us. However, in this case, the scientists propose that by using telescopes like the James Webb telescope, we might be able to see far back in time to actually finally detect these stars through the specific observations of hydrogen gas and other very specific emissions. And obviously, if these stars are detected somewhere in the early universe, that will be a giveaway sign that dark matter is real and seems to be some kind of a particle. And also, if these types of stars were real, they could have been responsible for the reionization of the universe, at least in the beginning. In other words, they could have been the first stars that might have served as a template for a lot of other stars later on that eventually formed into galaxies. And so it's a pretty interesting idea, but obviously, for now at least, it's just an idea and just a hypothesis. We don't really know if these stars existed, and obviously we have no idea if dark matter is real either. But years later, if we end up finding something like this, it could explain so much about the early universe, and even explain some other mysteries such as how certain black holes were able to grow so large so quickly. By having these dark stars with a lot of mass inside them, it would be possible for all of this to suddenly collapse into a relatively massive black hole, possibly thousands or even millions masses of the sun. And so at the moment, this is actually one of the better explanations for what we still don't understand about the universe and how things might have been different in this early universe in the first few hundred millions of years. But until investigations with James Webb or some other telescopes, or until we actually find signs of this somewhere out there in the early universe, we're not really going to know if this is true or if it's just another idea that's most likely going to be proven wrong in the future. And so until future studies and future videos, that's all I wanted to mention. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe you come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.